Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. Okay, so we've got our machine set up and our ironing station ready to go. And so we are going to head to our sewing directions in the instruction booklet. Um, if you're very, very new to sewing, it might be helpful for you to read through um, this section here. It just talks about um, seam allowances and how to make sure you're getting an accurate one. When we go over to the sewing machine, I'll show you um, kind of how I do it, um, but it teaches you about back stitching, which is important, um, and then pressing and how important that is. And then it talks to you a little bit about finishing your seams and raw edges. And so I will talk about that more when we get to step number four, which is where the first instance where that will be um, important. For now, we are actually going to enclose all of our seams um, as part of the instructions. So that's, that's really good. So we don't have to worry about finishing the seams just yet, but when we do, I'll be sure to talk you through how I'm gonna go about doing it. Because as I said, I'm not using my serger for this because I am a beginner, so it's just like the rest of you. Okay, so front and back, that's what we're gonna be working through today. It goes through steps one through uh, nine. So we're gonna be doing one through nine today. So. In the illustration, it'll tell you which pattern piece you need. We need number one, which is the front. So I like to bring that out just to have on hand so I can refer to anything that they are talking about and I kind of have it here with me in case I need it. Um, so our very first instruction is to turn under a 5 8 inch hem on armhole edges of front one and press, which is illustrated here. So we open up piece one of our fabric like so and we're turning it wrong sides up like so. You can move this out of the way and they are referring in the illustration to these armhole edges here. So this is our neckline and these are our armhole edges, one on each side. And they want us to turn these under five eighths of an inch. Maybe it's easier to see over here. They want us to turn these under five eighths of an inch and you wanna get that super, super accurate. So what you're gonna do is grab your hem gauge and grab a erasable marking tool. Some of them are water soluble, like when you wash this or rub water over it, it'll disappear. Some of them disappear over time, um, but you want something that's gonna go away so you don't see it anymore. And what I like to do for a 5 8 inch hem is actually, your instinct would be to measure 5 eighths of an inch and mark here, right? and then you fold along that fold line and that's your 5 8 inch hem. But what's difficult for me about that is I can't see the marking that I made and I don't really like marking on the right side of the fabric. So what I do is I take 5 eighths of an inch and I double it, that's one and a quarter inches, and then this is gonna be the measurement that I end up marking because after you mark it, like so, and then turn your garment over meet where the raw edge meets that line you just made. Now you've got a perfect 5 8 inch hem. So I am going to mark one and a quarter inches all along this raw edge as well as this raw edge over here. <laughs> So now we need to go over to our ironing board and press the raw edge up to the markings that we just made, creating a 5 8 inch hem, like so. Okay, now we are on to step number two. Open out pressed edge, which means this. 
And this is what I do sometimes, especially in the beginning, I will take one sentence at a time. Instead of trying to process what this whole paragraph means, I'll go one sentence at a time. So this is open out pressed edge. Okay, got it. Turn under again. So the raw edge is along the pressed crease, which means raw edge against the pressed crease like that. Okay, and then it says to press again. So you will go back to your iron and you will press this little itty bitty edge all along here. And then it says turn in along the crease. So then you'll turn in along this like so. And then we are going to stitch along this line here. Isn't that beautiful? It's gonna create a really nice finished edge on the inside of our like armholes. So let me get back to the ironing board and then I'll take you guys over to the sewing machine with me and talk you through how to get super accurate stitching along this edge. Now we have this pressed edge here and what we're trying to do is stitch as close as we can to this folded edge right here. Okay, so I like to put my fabric in the machine um, with the folded edge right along the edge of the presser foot. And if I were to put my needle down right now, then it wouldn't be catching this little uh, inner fold. So I have to move my needle over till it is just barely going to catch that. And I like to give myself, I don't know, maybe like a millimeter of, <laughs> of like room for mistakes because, you know, sewing straight is difficult. Um, so you want to put your needle down right along that mark. Okay, now we are going to start stitching and you're just really trying to make sure to keep this outer edge along the edge of the presser foot and you're trying to not pull your fabric either. Just gently ease it into the machine. Here we go. And we also don't, do not need to backstitch a ton here. I'll do like one or two just to make sure the stitch is locked in, but we don't need to do a full on backstitch because the the seam is going to be encased in this uh edge here anyways okay here we go so that was my backstitch i'm just slowly easing the fabric letting the feed dogs do the work keeping the outer raw edge in line with the edge of the presser foot and just go slow. And then just lock it in two times at the end and stitch off the edge. All right, so this is what it looks like on the right side. Focus. Can y'all see that stitching? And then on the inside, We've caught the raw edge and it's beautifully finished with no raw edges. Okay, so repeat the same thing on the other side. All right, so we have sewn our arm edges and uh, I've pressed them just to lock in those seams. I used a little itty bitty bit of steam on them as well. Okay, we are moving right along to step number three. To form casing, turn upper edge of front inside along fold line. That's the very first sentence. So on the inside, and it gives us a really great little illustration of what we're gonna be doing right here as well. Okay, so turning this with the wrong side up, just like in the illustration right here. Okay, so I've got my 
pattern here, and this is something that I neglected to mark when I was marking all the pattern markings. Um, but the fold line is an even one inch all along this upper edge. So that's easy enough for us to mark. And again, if I marked at one inch and then went to fold this under, I wouldn't be able to see that fold line. So I'm gonna mark it at two inches and do my little trick. So I guess in a way, I'm glad I forgot to mark it because that would have just been double the work. So my little trick, doubling the length of the hem that you're folding, I'm going to mark at two inches all the way around. All right, perfect. Now it says turn upper edge to front inside along fold line and then press. So we are gonna fold it so the raw edge matches up to that little two inch mark that I just made. And you wanna be extra careful that you keep this edge even, like not like that. You don't want anything like that or you don't want it to come to the inside either. You want it to be perfectly matched like so. So let's head to the iron and I will press that. And then it says after you press that, so you press this one under, then it also wants you to turn under a quarter of an inch like this and press that. So we're gonna be making this whole little casing over at the ironing board. Um, if you want to have another little mark to measure your quarter inch, then all you do is bump this down to one and a quarter inches, which is right there, and make another little mark. If I had another color, I would use that, but I don't have another color. But if you have another color, you can use that. You can make these little itty bitty dotted ones that would help differentiate the two lines. This way we're just accurate when we're folding under that quarter of an inch too and we're not just like guessing. Guessing is usually not very good in sewing. Okay, let's head to the ironing board. So this is our beautiful little casing, gorgeous. Um, we're gonna end up feeding like a piece of fabric through here and it'll kind of come together and that'll be what creates our little neckline, gorgeous. Okay, so now we have to stitch all along this line. So we're gonna go to the machine and do exactly what we did over here. We're gonna place this fold, um, toward the inside of the machine and then move our needle to where it's barely going to catch this. This is wider than our presser foot, so we're not gonna be able to put this on the edge of the presser foot like we did here. We're gonna have to use another marking on the plate of the machine. So let me show you what that looks like. Like I said, the folded part, the casing is wider than our presser foot. See how it's going past this edge? So what we have to do is we have to move the fabric in past the edge of the presser foot. So I'm going to put it actually at the 5 8 inch mark. So you can see on your presser foot, there is like a box, like a grid. And then the very first line of the grid is gonna be your 5 8 inch marking line. So I'm gonna put the edge of the fabric on that line because it's easy enough to follow that. And now I need to move my needle over to meet the raw edge of that, which is gonna be all the way on as far left as it'll go. And then I will put my needle down. This time we are gonna backstitch quite a bit, 
um, maybe five stitches or so just to make sure that we can get that um, edge locked in. There's not going to be anything else preventing that edge from coming undone. So we want to make sure we lock it in really good. Actually, let's move it in. I'm going to move it into the, what would that be? Three quarters of an inch. I just want to make sure I get it really close to the edge and then move my needle over. Um, yeah, I feel a lot better about that. Okay. And then back stitch a long way. Okay. And then just start sewing and you're trying to keep that um, folded edge on that three quarters of an inch mark. Okay, and now we backstitch a bunch. And then stitch on the edge like so okay here we are back at the table i have pressed this edge isn't she lovely so excited okay now you're going to want to take some kind of thread snips or very small scissors again these are by kai i love kai scissors the blades are so sharp and they last forever beautiful just be very careful that you don't cut obviously your fabric just the thread. Okay, so now we've got a beautifully finished neckline. Okay, now we're done with the front piece. Now it tells us on the instructions that we need pattern piece number two, which is our back. So we can move piece number one to the side and we're gonna be working on piece two. And I promised you some help with how to finish the raw edges. So this is where you need to make a decision. We've got our back sections, pin back, piece number two, sections, right sides together, which they already are because that's how we cut them, uh, matching notches and large circles. So we have our large circles here, and then we should have, oh, look who didn't mark three notches. So again, I can easily just pull this back out. Oh, the three notches are missing. There's an error, oh no. Okay, well, I don't really know how to help y'all. Just, there's not three notches to line up. But if you've cut your, I can't believe that, I've never seen that before. Um, if you, uh, cut your fabric right sides together and you have your raw edges, there's not any easing going on in here or any like bigger parts you have to fit into smaller parts. It's all the same length. So this isn't like a huge deal. Um, but just make sure that the ends line up, which mine did not, and the ends line up and then your dots line up. Okay crazy okay anyways um and we're gonna end up stitching from this dot all the way down to our hem but these edges here you cannot just leave raw because when you wash your garment they will start to fray and come undone and not only is it a mess and it's ugly, but then you run the risk of it coming on, like your stitching, like the fabric coming out of your stitching. So we have to find a way to prevent this from un unraveling. And according to the instructions, they gave four ways to do it. The fourth way is using a serger, which we are not going to do. So there's really only three ways. And I'm actually gonna be introducing a fifth way on our side seams. Uh, that'll be in the next video. I'm gonna show you guys how to do French seams, but I don't think that French seams are appropriate here because from here up is gonna be completely open and we're not going to be sewing this shut. 
So French seams can get a little bit funky when you have to try and continue them, the, continue the folds. That might not make sense to any of you, but um, just trust me that we need to find a better option than French seams for this seam. Okay, so options are you can get what is called pinking shears, pink like the color, and see how they're like little zigzags. And every time that a zigzag cuts into the fabric, it actually cuts it obviously at an angle. And each angle is like a diagonal into the fabric. And the way that the fabric is woven, when you cut something at an angle or on the bias, it's not going to fray. It's just like magic, it doesn't fray. So you can take your pinking shears and cut along the raw edge kind of like they show you to do here right you can go to your machine and you can set it to a zigzag stitch i think on my brothers anyways it's always been stitch number four and you can zigzag all along here and that will encase the raw edges or you can simply fold this in by a quarter of an inch and stitch along the raw edge you will still definitely have a raw edge exposed, but with the stitching line there, it won't come undone. The stitching will prevent it from coming undone. And then when you sew your, so we have this sewed down like this, and then you sew your seam and you press it open and you get a little number like that, which I think is the prettier of all of the options. Certainly it takes the most time, but that's okay because Time equals perfection, and that's what we're all striving for. So that is what I am going to do. I'm gonna take each of these pieces separately over to the ironing board. I'm gonna press them in by a quarter of an inch, which means, have you guys learned by now, that I'm gonna set this at half an inch, and I am going to mark from the blue dot all the way down half an inch, and then fold the raw edge to meet that line press that edge and then stitch right along that raw edge. So here is a sped up version of what that looks like. I have got both of my back, center back raw edges folded over and stitched. So now we have to place these back, right sides together with the dots matching. So there's a dot. And now, believe it or not, we are going to start using some pins, which we haven't needed until this point in time but we need them now. So line up your two dots like so, like that. And then line up your bottom hem like so. And then lay this out and pin the two edges together periodically throughout that space. Okay, very good. So now we're gonna go to our machine and we're gonna stitch this. Now remember, our seam allowance is 5 eighths of an inch, but we've already folded this under a quarter of an inch. So now our seam allowance from this folded edge is only going to be 3 eighths of an inch. Feel free to mark that, like move your little guy to three eighths of an inch and mark all along there if that helps you. Um, or place this red edge on the edge of your presser foot and then put your needle on this edge and then you can just line this up with the edge of your presser foot. So let's go do that. 
Okay, so what I was saying is you take your seam gauge, put it at 3 8 line that up, that 3 8 inch line, line that up with the edge of your presser foot, like so, and then move your needle so that it's just barely hitting the edge of that, um, the edge of the seam gauge. Okay, so now when you take this out, you know that your needle is down at the 3 8 inch mark. Okay, so just from the big circle, place your fabric, the um, folded edge at the big circle, drop your needle down, remove this pin and stitch. Backstitching a bunch here. All right, so after I stitched that, I went over to my iron and I pressed that seam open. It was like this at the sewing machine, and then I pressed it all open and flat so that, ta-da, isn't it beautiful? Love it. Um, and then as I was explaining, you know, when I was talking about encasing these seams, all of the ugly kind of like raw edge is tucked nicely on the inside. And, you know, after you wash your garment, you'll go through and you'll press it and you'll make sure this stays flat. And so it'll always be pretty on the inside. I did want to make a note that if you're using a knit fabric, this whole process is a little unnecessary because knit never unravels. So you could, in theory, just trim your knit um, to a quarter of an inch and leave them completely raw. You don't have to fold them under because your knit will never, ever, ever come undone. But you do want to make sure that you use a stretch stitch, which is one that kind of looks like a lightning bolt. That way, you know, these straight stitches, you know, don't stretch at all. But if it has that little like bend in it, then it'll give it some room to stretch as you wear it. Okay, enough about that. Now we are on to step number five. Turn under a 5 8 inch hem on back opening edges of dress above large circle. This should seem very familiar to you because we literally just did this when we did the armhole for the front. This long edge here, not the casing, but the little one. We're just going to do that same exact thing over again except we're just going to do it on this little bit here. So let's get to it. just pressed under the 5 8 inch hem and then pressed that under a quarter of an inch just like we did in step one and two I guess so we are going to stitch this just like we did on that step except when we get to the bottom edge where that big circle is we are going to do a little pivoting and stitch a horizontal line there. So I just wanted to show you guys how to do that. So put my needle down a little bit inside that fold, back stitch a couple times, and straight stitch. Okay, and once we get down here, I'm taking extra care to keep this other side of the back out of the way, but keep everything nice and flat. See how it's all laying perfectly flat there? Then you stitch 
until you get just past the um, where you ended the seam in the previous step. You lift up your presser foot, rotate your garment, keeping your needle down the whole time. Put your presser foot back down and stitch all the way to the other edge. So now we should be at the other folded edge. Pick up your presser foot again, turn your whole garment. So the hem is like back there and the neckline is up here. And the needle is in this left side. All right, then with the fabric, the folded edge of the fabric matching up with the edge of the presser foot, just like we did here, but on the other side, you stitch that down. Okay, so we just did five, we just did six, all of six. So yeah, that was the pivoting method that we just did. So we just finished five and six. And this is what the back of your garment should look like. You've got a center back seam right here. And then you've got that seam finished and continued. This is what is called like a keyhole opening. So your um, little neckline casing is gonna, neckline drawstring is gonna go through this area here and close this up. And you'll have this little opening showing a little itty bitty peekaboo of skin. It's very like sweet and romantic, sexy, but not too much. Um, and this is, should be high enough that you wouldn't see any bra strap or anything anyways. Okay, so there we go. This is your back piece now. Step seven, step eight, and step nine are the exact same steps that we did for our front piece. We're gonna finish off these raw edges on the arms and then we're gonna make the casing. So refer back to the video um, for steps, what was it? One, two, and three, I guessing. One, two, and three. So go back to the beginning of the video if you want instructions on steps seven, eight, and nine. They are the exact same as one, two, and three. The only difference is that on the front, our casing is just one, like one long casing for the front, but the back is gonna have two separate casings. So same thing, just split into two, but same exact construction method um, and everything, nothing new there. So let me do that. I'll show you what it all looks like and then we'll wrap this up and talk about All righty, steps one through nine are completely done. Here is my finished, uh, I guess, upper back. Isn't that gorgeous? And then here's, you've already seen this, but my finished upper front. So next week we are going to be doing our side seams, which is steps 10 through 15. So be sure to stay tuned for that. As always, if you have any questions about steps one through nine, leave them in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer them. If you're a more experienced sewist, take a little peek down there, see maybe you might be able to help somebody with some questions that they are having. But hopefully um, this will help you get through steps one through nine with no problems. Uh, thank you so much for watching and continuing on the uh, sew along. I will see you all very soon. <laughs> Bye.